Joining us now, David Salvo, Deputy Director of the Alliance for Securing Democracy. David, it's always great to have you. You know, President Biden, you heard say Vladimir Putin has failed, right, at every stretch of this way. You have Kamala Harris saying he's a war criminal. And yet, aside from the financial sanctions, Vladimir Putin has been pretty much controlling the tempo in this, right? He's setting the rules of this conflict. On one hand, that's right, Trace. I mean, the Russian military is clearly not going to stop bombarding Ukraine. On the other hand, the Russian military has been embarrassed by the Ukrainian resistance, and President Putin's invasion has has isolated his country uh, on, in every respect. It's making his country poorer, less secure. It's making his own regime poorer and less secure. So it's really, you know, it really is a failure in many respects. Even if the military invasion, you know, ultimately may uh, may lead to you know a victory of some sorts for for Russia. That, but that's the point there, David, isn't it? The whole concept of this thing is yes, and I would totally agree with you that the Ukrainians have fought tooth and nail. The Ukrainians have, have been put on a valiant fight, and the Russian forces have been embarrassed so far. But we've got a long way to go, and we see on these maps and we see from intel that the Russians are gaining ground. And the question becomes, what happens when they gain enough ground that the Ukrainians can no longer fight? And that's the question. And that's what happens when Vladimir Putin gets to control exactly what happens in the next steps of this war. Well, that, and that is the unfortunate reality, and it's clear that President Putin is not going to be pressing an off switch, and he's going to continue to shell civilian infrastructure indiscriminately in an attempt to try to cow the Ukrainians into submission here. And, you know, he, he may ultimately bring them to the table to do that, but if you think about the price that he's exacting just just to mm -hmm. to either occupy or annex territory that's going to be clearly against him, he's lost any goodwill in Ukraine he may have ever had. Uh, not to say the goodwill, you know, not talk about the goodwill of the international community. You know, at, at what cost is he is he doing this? It still sort of defies logic why he's embarking on this gambit. So day, day 17, David, right, it looks like Ukraine really, if, if you kind of talk to the people who are in Kyiv and in these other cities, it looks like they could fight for quite some time. And I'm not sure if, if ground, few, uh, ground troops are going to go into Kyiv. Uh, is, is Vladimir Putin patient enough to wait this out? Or the longer this goes and the less he thinks like he's going to have a big victory, will he get frustrated and become more reckless? So that's the big risk. I think he will get frustrated because he was expecting the, the Russian military to just roll right in and, and accomplish uh, objectives quite quickly. And the longer this goes on, you know, I fear that if he if he thinks that he can't win on his terms in Ukraine, he could be reckless enough to do something beyond Ukraine and potentially even uh, attacking a NATO ally. Now, I hope it doesn't get to that point, um, but it's I think he's in this for the long haul, and I think he will continue to try to uh, expand the scope uh, and, and the severity of the weapons that he's using to try to just pummel the country uh, into, into submission. And, and he may do that ultimately. Talk to me, David, about diplomacy very quickly, because if Zelensky tomorrow said, OK, we, we, won't, we won't hold any stake about Crimea or the Donbass regions, and and we may, you know, we may just stay out of NATO altogether. Would that be enough to get some serious bargaining done? Would that be enough to maybe end this war? I'm skeptical. Now, Russia, if you ask President Putin that question right now, he would say yes, but I wouldn't believe him. And that's because he preys on weakness. If Zelensky capitulates to those Russian demands right now, you can be sure that President Putin will then try to extract more demands, not just from Ukraine, but from the West. Um, he will probably try to uh, get NATO to pull back military infrastructure from countries, from, from NATO allies in Eastern Europe. He will try to redraw the, sort of the, the security arrangements that we've had longstanding with our European allies. So this isn't just about Ukraine, ultimately. And even if President Zelensky says, you know what, I, I've had it, you get Crimea and the Donbass and we'll stay out of NATO, mm -hmm. I think President Putin comes right back to us and our European allies and says, well, I'm not satisfied with that. What else are you going to give me? Yeah, it seems like the West is kind of walking on eggshells and Putin is never satisfied. David Salvo, great to see you tonight. Thank you for coming on. Thank you.